Hey everyone, welcome back to the October series where I am going through questions from what's up in YouTube comments answering your OCD questions. But today on part 12, I am taking a break and answering questions from Google. So I typed in common OCD questions and we are going to go through this and break it down. Before I go any further, please subscribe. Hit that like button down below. Phil at OCDrecovery.com. That is how you get in contact with us. That's how you get access to one of the WhatsApp groups. That's how you get to come to a webinar, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you get to hear me rant and rave about OCD for the rest of your life. Sounds horrendous, right? No, it's amazing. Okay. So first box, what questions do people ask with OCD? Do you experience unwanted thoughts, images, or impulses that repeatedly occur and enter your mind despite trying to get rid of them? Yes. Anyone that just talks about thoughts, if you go onto someone's page or an organization and everything was about thoughts, there's a good possibility, there's almost 100% probability, they do not understand OCD. I didn't even have a lot of intrusive thoughts and I had severe chronic OCD and body dysmorphia and it doesn't really matter what it is, it's a fear and behaviors. So the other problem is despite trying to get rid of them, that's where you're going wrong. Trying to get rid of your OCD symptoms is the problem. This is why we say wearing it like an uncomfortable coat in time, changing your perspectives, getting underneath your beliefs with unconditional self-life, other acceptance, understanding that acceptance doesn't mean agreement, etc. Do you ever feel driven to repeat certain acts over and over? Absolutely. This is where most people miss the nuances of OCD, which is the urges, the extreme urges that feel like a shotgun to the back of your head. I, when people, friends of mine that know I do this, what's it like to have OCD? I say, imagine you're on a park bench. You're looking at a beautiful sunset or a river. You have a book. You have some coffee in your hand. And all of a sudden, you hear this. Right to the back of your head. Give me all your money. I'm going to kill you in three seconds. Imagine how you would feel. That's what we feel all day long for years of them. And they're like, that's terrible. I'm like, I know. <laughs> so does this waste significant time or cause problems in your life? Well, yes, of course it causes problems in your life. You have an anxiety and severe obsessive, obsessional based disorder. So it's not about wasting time per se, but you can waste per se your time by not building your structure whilst you're living with it. Okay. So what's the next one? What are some common OCD thoughts? Fear of germs or contamination. Correct. Fear of forgetting and losing, misplacing things. Correct. Fear of losing control over one's behavior, schizophrenia, harm, OCD, aggressive thoughts towards oneself or others, self-harm, etc. Unwanted, forbidden, taboo thoughts. Yes, so I can go on and on and on and on. I did. This is from the National Institute of Mental Health. So a good job of them going over what some of the fear patterns are, but it could be about anything. You could have OCD about anything that you value, okay? Why is OCD so hard to treat? One of the main reasons OCD is so hard to overcome is the self-perpetuating cycle of obsessions and compulsions. Where an individual with OCD has an intrusive thought or a fear, they feel compelled to perform a certain action to alleviate their anxiety. Pretty good response from May 8, 2023, but still pretty much off. Okay, one of the main reasons why OCD is so hard to treat is because unless you have OCD, it's more than likely impossible to understand it. Okay, I'll give you a great example. I like using basic examples for simplicity, okay? If you could teach something to a fourth grader, you probably know the topic pretty well. Too many people nowadays try to make things overcomplicated. Imagine if I wrote 40 years on Poland history and I was a PhD at Oxford on Polish, Poland and their history and their culture and then I meet a Pole and they say, have you been to Poland? And I say, never. They say, you probably don't really know much about the culture then because you've never been. Personal experience, we're living in a society right now where academia has been seen to be the, oh, it's not the people with academia, it's not beneficial. It is in many ways. It's just not what people think. That is key. So one of the main reasons why it's so hard to treat OCD is because A, people usually don't understand it. And it's a perpetuating fear cycle not just obsessions, it's a fear cycle that's driven through urges to perform compulsions and then all the other thoughts that come there and the nuances. Okay, one of the three C's of OCD, never heard this. Some clients may be familiar with the three C's, which is formalized process of doing both the above. Catch it, check it, change it. That's not gonna work. OCD feels way too real to just catch it, check it, and change it. It's like, 
you know, uh, I was working with someone, there's someone I coach, she's also a therapist. And we were talking about a well-intentioned celebrity that was just on the show, very, very famous celebrity, talking about how to recover from panic disorders by riding the waves. So you just let the, you ride the waves of the thoughts. Okay, look, leaving thoughts there and letting it ride on the wave is an important part, but there's, that has the philosophical depth. It's like, if this is the, the, the wave and this is the Mariana's Trench, that stays right here on the very basic, it's, there's no depth to it. So yes, learning to be aware of why you're doing it, but this idea that you can like catch it and change it in the moment, implementing, the, it's called implementing the easy shift perspective. Good luck, my friend. What prompts OCD? Experts aren't sure of the cause, but more than likely a genetic brain abnormality and environment are thought to play a role. It often starts in teens and early adulthood, but it can also start in early childhood. Absolutely. More than likely genetic. Why, when people ask me, do you not think it's genetic, etc.?" I say to them, um, okay, let's say OCD is just based off rigid beliefs that are latched because something happens in their life. There's no genetic component. Last time I checked, humans are really fucking irrational and they hold really rigid beliefs. So if that's your base case, and most people have gone through something tough in their life, then everyone have chronic OCD. There's more than likely a large genetic component, especially when you look at family histories, familia history. What is the rarest form of OCD? Ah, it's rare. So many rare forms of OCD are unrecognized, and that is relationship obsessions. Our OCD is like the biggest fear pattern there is. Somatic obsessions. It's not rare, but uncommon to be talked about. Existential. Ex these are all three. These are super common fears. So, okay. What are OCD killer thoughts? Dun, dun, dun. Violent thoughts may involve both mental images and impulses to act. These can include those in which people see themselves as hitting, stabbing, strangling, mutilating, or otherwise injuring children or family members or themselves. Ah! So, yes, this is where harm OCD comes from, POCD, fear of losing control. But again, getting underneath this with unconditional self life other acceptance, we have covered that on numerous videos, etc., etc., etc. What is the most common obsessive thought? Some of the most common thoughts are harming yourself. I mean, that's a common thought, but it's not really the most common. The most common fears are based on what societal judgments are. So harm, I mean, a POCD slash harm OCD and relationship OCD because of the way people view relationships nowadays, which is uh, asinine in many ways. And, and that is why those are more than likely the societal fears. Um, does OCD make you ask a lot of questions? Yes, because I'm the coach and I get asked millions of questions a day. Often the person will consciously or logically be aware they don't need the reassurance, but the OCD brings on the doubt that makes them seeking it. Correct. It's the urge to seek out the certainty. We are addicted to certainty like we are addicted to hard drugs. The most noticeable version is explicitly asking something over and over and over again when the answer is obvious. Absolutely. Great point. Great, great point. What questions... Should I ask my therapist? Question number one is, do you use ERP? If that is your number one question and they say, and exposures are key, but exposures are in no way the gold standard. How do I know this? I've worked with thousands of people who have gone through massive ritualistic exposure therapy by well-intentioned people. They made a lot of progress, but they're still stuck because they never handled their worst case scenario and the fear of being stuck forever. How many individuals are treated? Have you treated with ERP? Again, only focusing on ERP. What is your approach to getting someone ready for treatment? That's not a good question. There is no right time to be ready. It's when the person comes in and this is what they have to do. How frequent are treatment sessions and how long does it take? So usually our calls are anywhere between 35 and 45 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, 40 to 50 on the initial call, but usually not. More than that, it's usually reassurance. Um, you could tell someone has been so used to getting questions over and over and over again, etc. What is the hardest type of OCD to treat? Ah! Hoarding disorder and pure OCD are harder to treat because it doesn't respond to ERP. That is exactly why people do not understand OCD. First of all, there's no such thing as puro. Well, the puro is just obsessional. It's called obsessive, compulsive. Also, you meet someone that says, I have puro, which I've met thousands of them. And I sit them down and say, tell me about your life. 
That's a compulsion. That's a compulsion. That's avoidance. That's a compulsion. Oh, holy shit, really? Yes, there's no such thing as pure O. It's a fancy type that doesn't exist. And there's no such thing as the hardest type of OCD to treat. If you're looking at it from an exposure standpoint, then probably because you're looking at it from the wrong angle. What makes OCD worse? Ah! Stress, trauma, sleep deprivation, hormones, avoidance. Oh my gosh, the information on the internet is priceless. Nothing makes your OCD worse but your beliefs and your behaviors and actions around it. So I hope you guys enjoyed me breaking down lots of lovely stuff on the internet. Again, everyone more than likely, for the most part, they mean well when they're helping us. But this is a nuanced disorder that takes the experience more than likely to get it. We get it. We've been there. I was in the mental hospital. I don't want to live. Look where I am now. You can get better, Phil, at ocdrecovery.com. Thank you so much. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.